So new Intel CPUs are here. Uh, our videos have been a little delayed since there's still not even stock of most of the chips in the country. The 9900K, as you can see, is delayed until November 15th. The 9700K only came into the country last week, and then the 9600K has been here for a little bit. In today's video, I kind of want to talk about the one that nobody really paid attention to, which is the i5. 9600K, compare it to the 8600K and see why does this one even exist? Is there a reason for it to even be here? Check the specs, check the temperatures because it is different in a specific way and see how it goes. But before we get into the nitty gritty details of the video, I wanna let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace, my friends. There's no other ads on this video. It's a demonetized video here on YouTube. That's because Squarespace is paying for it. So if you need a website or an online store, you need some marketing tools or analytics for your website, Squarespace is the all in one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this. We'll talk more about them at the end of the video. But with that being said, let's dive into the, the meat and potatoes, which is talking about this 9600K. So on the surface, even the boxes look nearly identical between the 8600K and the 9600K. The only difference is that the 8600K is VR ready for a great VR experience. The 9600K, not so much apparently since they just got rid of it on the box. Obviously that's not true. So taking a look at just the raw specs of the CPU on the arc.intel website. You'll see that the Core i5-9600K has a slightly higher base clock at 3.7 gigahertz to the A600K's 3.6 gigahertz, and that the boost clocks are also slightly different. In reality, on all core boosts, when we were actually testing the chip, the 9600K was able to hit 4.4 gigahertz, whereas the all core boost on the 8600K was 4.2 gigahertz. They also share the same amount of RAM, the same amount of cores, the same amount of threads, the same TDP. On the surface, there looks like there's no difference between the two chips. However, when you do some digging, you'll find out that the 9600K is soldered, which means that it should provide better thermals than the crappy thermal interface material that's been on the 8600K. And during our testing, we tried to do our best to find it out. You'll see the test bench right behind me is what we used for the testing. So we did the Z390 Godlike from MSI. We used the Castle 240 RGB cooler from Deepcool. We used 16 gigs of Vengeance Pro RGB from Corsair. And then we tested everything with the Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti, again from MSI, so that there was no G GPU bottlenecks. There was nothing about the system that was changed between the two chips. We ran the 8600K on the Z390, just like the 9600K. So let's talk about the stock experience. We didn't overclock anything. Obviously, this is not how most people would run a 9600K because it is an unlocked chip. You're supposed to overclock it. Z390 motherboard, overclocking motherboard. However, so at stock, where it would hit 4.4 gigahertz to the 4.2 on the 8600K, it drew about four more watts on average average from the wall, then the 8600K, 84 watts to the 80 watts on the 8600K, which led to temperatures being slightly higher on the 9600K. 62 degrees to the 8600K is 58 degrees, with the max temp of the 9600K being lower, but the average temp was actually higher, as well as the idle temp was significantly higher as well. These were tested at the same time of day with the same ambient temperatures, so it was noticeably warmer on the 9600K. Obviously, there are some variants Experiences with the change in thermal uh, paste on the CPUs that could lead to that. But when we take a look at the overclock, so we decided not to go for max overclock, but try something stable. Five gigahertz at 1.375 volts. That's something that mostly all chips are gonna be able to hit on this new Coffee Lake refresh, or even the original Coffee Lake. It doesn't depend on silicon lottery. Obviously, if we overclocked it to 5.4 gigahertz, that doesn't mean everybody's going to be able to. Some chips can only do 5.1. So we tried five gigahertz on both of the chips at 1.375 volts. And we see that the average temperature of the 9600K is four degrees lower than the 8600K at this voltage and frequency, even though the max temp was one degree higher. It did average quite a bit lower. And then the idle temperatures on both of them were nearly identical. However, curiously, the power draw of the 9600K happened to be a bit higher, coming in at 145 watts almost to the 120 watts that the 8600K was drawing. So there is a higher average power draw on the 9600K, which 
with the, it having average lower temperatures means that the soldering actually does do a good job at the high end, even if we're not seeing it on the stock clocks with the stock setup. Obviously, temperatures being the big difference here as far as what's the difference between the chips. Let's go into performance numbers and to see if there's any difference there. So at base settings, at just not overclocking, we see that in most games that we tested, Ashes of the Singularity, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, in all of the games that we tested, there was an average of three percent difference in the average frame rate that you could get at 1080p high with the 2080 Ti. So in a system that's not realistically going to happen in settings that you're not gonna use that graphics card for, you would see a max of 3% difference in video games, which is the difference between 93 FPS and 95 FPS. That's not a whole lot. That's not something that anybody would really care about. And then in an unconstrained scenario by the GPU, such as in Cinebench, we saw a 5% difference on the multi-core score and a 6% difference on the single core score. So the 9600K is slightly better, 5% in just raw scenarios. In video games, however, you're likely not going to experience a bottleneck whatsoever. If you pair this with a 1070, your, your difference is gonna be basically zero, especially at 1440p or 4K. It's not gonna be a realistic scenario for you to find any difference here. Obviously, once we overclocked and set them both to five gigahertz, the performance difference became zero. There was a margin of error difference in each and every game that we had. And then in an unconstrained scenario such as Cinebench, there was a 0.25% increase in multi-core score for the 9600K. And then the 8600K actually beat it in single core performance by one point, which is obviously just margin of error from run to run. So that brings me to why does the 9600K exist? It's barely an increase over the 8600K in most scenarios, they don't really make sense for purchasing. At this point, if we take a look on the Amazon store, the 8600K is going for $260 and the 9600K is going for $280. That is $20 difference for not $20 increase in performance. In fact, it's a zero increase in performance if you overclock them, which you should be doing on a K-series CPU. So this next part is gonna be a bit of speculation. The 9600K doesn't make any sense to exist in the scenario that it needed to be released with a Coffee Lake refresh. It provides no additional value, it has no additional threads, and barely any additional performance at stock. What it does do, however, is make the i7-9700K make a little bit more sense. So if we take a look at what Intel has launched with this Coffee Lake refresh, they completely changed the structure of their desktop CPUs. They released an i9 with an i7 on the mainstream desktop platform and then turned that what usually is an i7, which is a hyper-threaded CPU, the hyper-threaded version of the i5, they turned that into the i9 and then the i7 7 is the non hyper threaded version of the i9. So without the 9600K, it actually looks like the i7 is what an i5 should be. And I think there would be more backlash on the i7 9700K if they also didn't release an i5 9600K. Since Intel changed everything anyways, it would make sense that they could drop an i5 from the platform. They don't need to release it. It actually adds no performance increase. They didn't release any of the non overclockable chips, so they could have also just dropped the i5 off the face of the map. But if it was only the top two tier chips that were actually put on the market, then I think that there would be more confusion as to what exactly we're getting with the i7. But as it stands, the i7 is an improvement over the i5 because you get two additional cores, even if it's not hyper-threaded like its i9 counterpart, which even the i9 doesn't make any sense because it's not a true i9 since it doesn't have the PCI Express lanes and doesn't have the high-end desktop support. So the ending conclusion of this video is that the 9600K is worth buying. You can absolutely pick it up and you'll get the exact same performance that you would have gotten from an 8600K. However, in the current state where both of these chips are on sale, I can't recommend getting the 9600K. Once the 8600K goes out off the market and is obsolete, 9600K is totally fine. The 9600K is a fine chip. It's just a little wonky as far as the fact that the 8600K is still up for sale and it doesn't look like there's any real reason to actually release it, which big thanks to Wootware because they sent this to us uh, for us to check out. So thanks to them for hooking us up with that. But you know who else hooked us up for this video? It's Squarespace. They're the ones who actually sponsored it. Squarespace, in case you don't know, is an amazing website platform where you can build anything that your heart desires to make a website for either your business, for your personal needs, or like 
like we do. We built a UFD deals website where we actually showcase tech deals from around the internet and that is hosted by Squarespace. So it's amazing that they would even sponsor us after we've already been using their platform. Not only can you build a website, you can also buy domains. You can transfer your domains over. They have marketing tools that are built in. You can build an online store. They have beautiful designer templates that are award winning. So if you have no sense of style like me, you're gonna be able to make something that's halfway decent even if you might be graphically incompetent. And then if you struggle at all with implementing certain features, you want to have something on your website but you're not quite sure how to do it, Squarespace has you hooked up with a 24 seven award winning customer support. I was talking to our website developer the other day and he was just like, I am so glad we actually chose Squarespace because no matter what time of day I contact them here in South Africa, they are there, they're ready to respond and they actually know what they're talking about, which is amazing. So Squarespace, can't recommend them enough from a personal standpoint. Obviously, this is a sponsor spot as well. So if you wanna get 10% off of your first Squarespace order, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash UFD and that'll get you 10% off, whether or not it's a domain or you actually just using their service, 10% off if you want that. And don't forget that you can try them for free before you buy. So you could build your website, see how it would look with their templates, and then you can click live once you're ready to pay, but they're so confident in their service that they let you try it for free. But in case you actually do make the jump, squarespace.com forward slash UFD to save 10% on your purchase. So big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Big thanks to you guys for watching this video. Thanks to Woodware for hooking us up with the 9600K. Big thanks to us for having an 8600K that we're gonna keep around since the 9600K isn't really a good replacement. But I wanna know what you guys think of this comparison. 9600K, 8600K, which one do you actually wanna use? What are your thoughts on why Intel even released this chip? Because it's nearly identical. Uh, so just let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related videos. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.